First off, Jamie, thanks for taking the time to join us. Um, just thought it'd be good to chat about your time at the club. Um, so how are you keeping in these strange times? Um, yeah, not too bad. Just keeping busy. Uh, I try to sort of have a structure and a plan to sort of each day, which, which is what sort of keeps me going. Um, the missus and the little one, so we do a bit of homeschooling. A um, bit of gym work, homeschooling, lunch, and then sort of a bit of outside sort of walking and exercise. And then before you know it, the day's sort of done. So it's not too bad. It's, it's frustrating, but you sort of um, got to just accept where we are and, and make the best of it. You know, there's no point getting down or worrying or complaining. You know, we are where we are. So make the best of it. And that's sort of what I'm, I do, really, is just make the best of what we, what we can do. Um, and that's it. Play a bit of computer. Watch the little one play computer. Um, so yeah, I've been staying up a bit later than normal. I've been playing online quite a bit. So I'm normally in bed before twelve, and I'm staying up a bit later. So yeah, connecting with friends and and stuff. So yeah, it's been all right. It's not been too bad. Um, it's been a 26 year career and still going for you. I guess this mm. is you know unlike anything else you've ever experienced. Yeah, it's like it'd be the longest I've had probably not playing. Um, I mean, we obviously finished a while ago. Um, and then I don't know when the season will start again. So um, I suppose playing on league, I'm not contracted. So again, things are up in the air um, with Hornchurch because um, clubs obviously won't start sort of sorting stuff out until they know when the season's going to start. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, hopefully, it starts as normal in, in August or, or September, but it, it could go on further. So you know, it might be a very long time you know, before I kick a ball. So I'm determined not to let the coronavirus retire me just yet. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had phone calls and, and, and propositions from, from clubs so far about next year, but, you know, there's no point thinking about it in, in, until we know, you know, when the season's going to actually start. And like you said, you're on the books at Horn Church at the moment, still scoring goals mm -hmm. at, age, at the young age of 44. Um, what's yeah. been your secret to keep going into your 40s? Um, I wouldn't say there's been a major secret, just sort of the love and enjoyment of the game. Um, and the determination not to want to quit. I think that that's the main drive for me is just, you know, thoroughly enjoy still playing and scoring goals and winning and stuff. And then the other side is your body trying to sort of keep up with your mind. So, you know, thankfully my body's been good. So I try and look after it as much as possible. So, you know, for me, when a season's sort of going, it's more sort of preparation and recovery. That's, that's all I sort of live by, you know, get prepared for a game and then recover after a game. And that sort of rolls on. So, you know, eat well, sleep. Um, you know, stay as sort of healthy as possible um, and just know your body. You know, you sort of get older, you sort of know what you can and can't do and you recognise if there's injuries coming or stuff. So you, you take your foot off the gas a bit. Just generally look after yourself. I think that's been the only thing. There's not been any, any major thing what I've done um, that I can put my finger on. I think I've just overall made healthy choices and looked after myself a lot more and the drivers are still there. So I think that's the, they're the two sort of key components, really. Absolutely. And um, how well have Hornchurch been getting on this season? Um, yeah, we were, season we, ended were, early. we were third, so we had a chance of obviously promotion and playoffs, you know. So we had nine games left. Um, I think Worthing were top seven points clear. We had to play them at home. Um, and then you never know what can happen. Um, you know, we were confident we would finish in the playoffs regardless. You know, we could have gone up automatically. So, yeah, it's disappointing, really. You know, you work so hard to put yourself in a position of promotion and then all of a sudden get stopped and that's it. You start again next season from scratch. Um, and again, non-league, because players aren't contracted, do you keep the same squad? Do they get other offers because they've done well? So, you, you know, sometimes these chances don't come along too often and, and that's in the professional game. Non-league is just as sort of strong, really, because clubs do, you know, move on. Um, so, yeah, it's disappointing. Um, you know, hopefully, from my perspective, they keep the squad, I stay and we have another crack at it. Um, but, you know, you just don't know at the moment because of what's going on. Uh, 26 years in football so far. You've played in all four professional divisions in England and scored in all four, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you must look at your career with some, such, some pride. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sort of now, I suppose, we're having so much time off gives you a bit more time to reflect, really. Um, you know, because of playing and stuff and, and working, you're always sort of onto the next thing. And I'm always looking at the next sort of targets and whatnot. So now having a bit of time, it's nice to sort of sit down and reflect a bit. I've done a lot of sort of interviews talking about it. So you, you tend to sort of bring up a lot of memories. So yeah, sitting here now, I suppose as a kid, if, if you'd have told me I'd had the career I'd have, then yeah, I'd be very proud of that. So, you know, I probably could have done better at times and maybe played higher for longer. Um, you know, done probably more as a youngster probably wasn't as professional as a kid, but 
I think overall to, to still be playing and playing all the leagues and scoring all the leagues, then, you know, I, I've fulfilled a, a, you know, a dream really. So, yeah, I have to be, you know, happy and proud of that, definitely. And you're one of a small number of people to have played over a thousand matches um, mm. in your career, scoring over 350 goals. Um, if you had to pick a favourite match out of that, could you narrow it down? I mean, that's probably a tough ask. I mean, um, I think the most important match was was my game Reading against Brentford, <clears throat> which was um, you know last game of the season. We had to draw, or win to go up, and they had to win to go up, and otherwise we'd have finished in the playoffs. And we ended up drawing one one and, and getting promoted. And I scored the goal that that equalised and, and you know took us up. You know, I wasn't solely to do with it. You know, it was a whole season, but. Spurs is an important um, as a game and, and playing such a big part. I think that's you know one of the ones that stands out massively, and you know it meant so much to Reading, and you know everyone says it's sort of propelled them into what they've become now. So I think with a one-off game, um, the more of the importance, not probably as an individual performance for me, I've probably had better games, but just what what we've done as a team and, and, and playing such a big part in it. I'm guessing scoring in the Premier League for Norwich must have been a pretty special feeling as mm. a as well. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I wouldn't have even thought about it because I would have been a young lad and just expected that that would have carried on. So I suppose when you look back, that that was my only stint in the Premier League, then it becomes a lot more special the, the older you get and the more you look back on it. Um, because you know, I didn't obviously have another another crack at doing that. So yeah, you know, and I appreciate every player wants to play in the Premier League, and, and not every player does. So for me to start there and, and play, you know number of games and score some goals um yeah it puts you know at the top of the tree really um it's hard to think back because it was so long ago um and obviously my memories and stuff I've done throughout my career you know probably stand out a bit more but yeah if we go back at the very beginning then you know I was 19 playing and scoring in the Premier League which nowadays would be held as a, a young superstar I suppose so yeah it does you know when you look back it makes you you know feel very special and very proud that I managed to achieve it as you say, you've had time to reflect on your career mm. um, over the last few weeks. Um, just how much would you say football's changed, you know, during your career? Yeah, massively. I mean, we go back to Norwich days, breaking into a first team. It was, you know, everyone says a drinking culture, but it was just a culture of you worked hard and you played hard sort of thing. Um, and that was across the board. So, you know, you went into training, you trained very hard and most of the time the team would go out, you know, on a Tuesday. Um and then Saturday after a game, it was like religious, really, coming up from the way game, every beer's on a bus. Um, went out after a game and then you socialise together a lot more and, um, you know, you come in, you really worked hard. So there were a lot of, sort of older men. It was a man's sort of dressing room you went into. So it was difficult, you know, and you had to stand up and, um, you know, have confidence in yourself. You know, you, you tagged along because you went out because you wanted to find a group because of peer pressure and stuff. So that was a completely different era. But, you know, it, it made me grow up a lot. Um, and then obviously each sort of, I suppose, five years, 10 years, it just seems to move on. And obviously then you get a bit more sports science and um, people then become more avid. An athlete don't go out as much, don't drink as much. And social sides is like you go in, you go home sort of thing, where most sort of teams early on, you, you stuck together and went out. But it's changed a hell of a lot, you know, how people look after their bodies, you know, the, the, fitness side you know preparation everything you know it's changed and it will only keep going you know I worked in, in Arsenal's academy and went into their first team sort of surroundings and you just see what clubs have and they push the boundaries so much to achieve you know and players push themselves to, to be the best so yeah it's, it's changed massively I'd, I would love to be a player now you know as a kid don't get me wrong growing up work in the era I did loved it but I think to now be a kid in the academy set up and in first team setups of what they have at the top clubs would for me would be amazing to, to be a part of that and I think that you, you know you're sort of not allowed to fail anymore as a kid if you're that good clubs will put cotton wool around you you would have advisors everywhere um, and you'll be pushed in every direction to, to succeed I think when I was young I moved to Norwich as a, as a, a kid I bought my first house at 18 didn't speak to anyone moved in and just become a man growing up on your own really you know, and I think nowadays that, that doesn't happen. So I was making my mistakes and trying to learn from them. Where well, I think now they do get pushed in the right directions to to become you know top professionals, and then it's down to the individual to to push themselves. So um, yeah, I think nowadays it's amazing what what clubs have and resources and stuff. Um, and it's changed completely, you know, tenfold really. 
Um, and even going into non-league, it's, you know, still a decent standard, very professional, um, you know. So, yeah, football's evolved massively from when I, when I first sort of stepped in the dressing room. Would you say um, towards sort of like the later stages of career, you've been able to sort of support the younger players and pass on your knowledge and experience? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I've always tried um, as I've got older. I mean, I was quite a, sort of self, sort of narrow-minded and always very focused on my job. Um, very selfish, I suppose, in that way. As I've got older, um, I suppose for maybe going to, to Exeter, really, I, I moved at 35 um, and it was a case of trying to revive a little career because I've not done as well as I had at Norwich. And then you have youngsters that come in and you try and help them. I think leading by example was probably my biggest thing. So I start to eat a lot better and I think the kids then would look and see. So I'd bring my own food in and do different bits. And I think then they'd see how old I was, see that I could still do a very good job, still be fit. And then I think that then they look and go, okay, well, he's that old. How can he's doing this and he's still playing? I think that was, the, rather than speaking to them, I think me doing stuff probably helped a lot more. Um, and yeah, I'd get bantered by players when, you know, playing from 35 onwards, doing different things and away games, I'd have my own food and, you know, silly little things. But I think by that, you get bantered, but I think they do pick it up and look and go, okay, and then he's still playing, you know, it must be something right. Um, and then if anyone ever spoke to me, yeah, I'd give them as much advice as possible. I think my advice is... is sort of very wide I suppose from being a kid I've probably gone through and done more than any of them have even thought of and you know I can advise them on a lot of stuff and you know if you really want to make it and you really want to stay in the game for a long long time you have to sacrifice everything in a way um, and if you're not prepared to do that then you know you'll flit along and have a career but it just depends on what levels you want to be at and, and how far you want to push yourself and you know I would advise people on, on, on everything but like say because I've gone through it all been a a donut as a kid and sort of learn from stuff and, and try to do things better um so yeah I've always always tried to help them and hopefully you know they, they've taken some sort of bits with the youngsters I've played played alongside and I still get messages from from a lot of them from Dagenham and uh, Cheltenham and, and Exeter and just you know still sort of keeping contact through social media and you know hopefully you know I've passed on something which hopefully will help them you know in their careers. Uh, you had a spell in Korea as well. Um, what was yeah. that, I guess, uh, and how did that compare to the English game? Um, it was strange, I suppose, outside of football. Football side was good. You know, there were some good players. Uh, training facilities were outstanding and stadiums were all the ones from the, the World Cup. So, you know, they're some of the best stadiums I've played in, to be honest. They were ridiculous. Um, it was more the outside of it. I was there on my own. Um, family, kids left my, my missus at the time so that was my difficult side and um, I think from that I struggled really to perform um, so yeah I enjoyed it it was different completely different way of life and um, training was fine and the games were fine but there was different ways you'd finish a game and they'd go straight for a meal it was like a mad rush there was no team talk after a game and the next week just sat in a restaurant so it was different um, I think really for me it was the timing you know, I went too early too young um, if I'd have gone later in my career with a family, I think I'd have really, really enjoyed it because I lived in a, a lovely apartment lived on a beach. I mean, everything was perfect. Um, it was just too early. Um, and, you know, looking back, uh, you know, I probably lost two, two seasons in England, really, because I, I struggled when I come back because I was still mentally drained from, from living on my own and, and struggling and being away from my kids. So, you know, it was probably, you know, the wrong move, really, at the wrong, at just the wrong time. It wasn't so much going there was a bad place it was just it wasn't right for me at that, at that time um but something you learn from I you know learned a lot about myself I was on my own a lot and you know not so much down and depressed but you get a bit upset and missing stuff but you know you come through it and, and you're fine but yeah I wish really I would have maybe had that sort of opportunity to go maybe early 30s and I think it would, you know would have been a lot better if I was settled family wise I think it would have been a real good career move but it was just too early you know I was still scoring goals in the championship and you know, I had an opportunity to stay at Reading or, or go to other championship clubs. So it was foolish for me, really, because then I come back and sort of started around for two years before I got back to the levels I wanted to be at. So, yeah, yeah. But it's one of the things I've lived in South Korea, which I suppose not many people can say they have. <laughs> uh, moving on to Exeter City, um, you came in on mm. trial in 2010, uh, looking for a club closer uh, to home um, or closer to Bristol, I think, was it? Um, yeah, it was sort of... I'd, I'd been at Norwich and I'd 
the last year I haven't played a lot and then when I learned to shoot it didn't do very well so you hit 35 and um, you sort of think okay what's next and it was the first year I'd had where I didn't have options so the phone wasn't ringing as much and you sort of go okay what, what's going on and then Andy Tilson obviously I played with at Rovers as my captain and still spoke to basically rang me and said would you fancy coming down and having a trial um, at the time we were living in me and my wife were living in Norwich she's originally from Essex we were like okay what, what can we do there wasn't a lot of options so I said to her look I'm going to have to go to do this because you know, you've got to work and I still want to play so I went down there obviously I've got my mum in between who lives in Bristol mm. um, went on trial and, 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 and earned a six month contract so I lived at my mum's and my, my wife moved back to Essex so we sort of lived apart for the season uh, it obviously started to go very well and I think I got offered a, an extension of my contract in Christmas um, but yeah it was the first year that I had where I, I literally had to go and, and really really earn a contract if I, if I didn't do well there and didn't get a contract it would have been okay where am I going to next um, but thankfully I, I did well well enough in pre-season and, and, and Tiz offered me a, a six month deal and then it was like right, okay I'll show you that I'm worth another obviously six months which, which I did you scored 20 goals and was top scorer that season. Um, did the pressure of you know playing for a contract really help you push on at that point, would you say? I think so. I tend to have seasons and bits and bobs in my career when I'm at my, not lowest point, but I'm at a point where people have sort of given up on me and I'm, I'm there having to prove everyone wrong, I suppose. So, yeah, I tend to have that quite a lot that when I have a knockback or people feel that that's the end and, you know, don't want you, I tend to then sort of, I should respond to it, I suppose. So, yeah, it was a determination to, you know, turn up and, and earn the contract. Then it was a six-month, and I like went, OK, oh, well, I will show you in those six months that I'm worth more. And you then sort of let it spur you on and drive you. And it wasn't so much tears. It would probably be the, the Norwich sort of side and other people that who hadn't spoke to me in the summer and hadn't picked up the phone thinking that I was finished. So it was more everyone else that I always looked out and thought, okay, everyone thinks I'm finishing the game, I'll, I'll show you. And that always sort of, especially from 35, spurred me on quite a lot because I knew that I was at an age where not many managers take older players. Um, Tiz was one of them and he respected older players, liked them around for what they could achieve um, and what they could bring to the, the group. So, um, yeah, it wasn't so much proving Tiz wrong, it was more proving everyone else outside of Exeter who could have signed me wrong. So that was my motivation in a way, and it, it spurred me. It spurred me on, and every time I score, I'd, I'd you know, be smiling to myself and thinking. You know, and then the phone starts to ring even more. Then, and you then start to laugh and think, "Well, you could have signed me a year ago." So, those were the things from thirty-five. People that I spoke to during my periods of being out of contract that turned me down would always be the people that I would then try and prove wrong. So that was sort of the motivation, which you know I think helped me a lot in in my sort of latter stages. Um, and you won supporters and players player of the season in your first season. Mm. Um, that must have been quite a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, whenever you join a club, you always obviously want to do very well um, for yourself personally, um, for the manager who's brought you in, for the players and for the fans and, you know, just the club as a whole. So, yeah, when you do well and you get, obviously, awards because of your achievement, you know, what you've done in that season, obviously, is very special, I have to say, because, you, you know, you're in a team squad but everyone does very well so to be picked out as an individual in amongst that um, by fans and stuff you know is obviously very special so yeah I've won a few at, at different clubs and you know they're the things you cherish because you're not judged on one game you're judged over uh, 40, 40 odd games so for you to have been consistent and done, done your job over that period and, and be picked out as, as the fav, you know, best player I suppose you know it means a lot because you know we can all do well on any given day and have a good game here but to be consistent and that that's what every player wants to achieve um, so yeah um, I've still got the trophies and stuff and, and whatnot and yeah they're, they're good memories you look back on and, and you think well in that one season that's you know a hell of an achievement. You ended up moving to Leighton Orient at the end of um, mm. the season um, a spell that didn't quite work out um, probably as you'd hoped um, do you regret leaving St James Park at that point? I suppose because of what happened, yeah. Um, the main motivation for the move was was my missus. Um, she was in Essex. Um, so I'd sat down with Tiz. Um, we'd agreed another year. Money was fine and everything. Bristol Rose had come in for me, um, which was a club I would have loved to have played for again. Um, and Leighton Orient. There was a few other options around. Um, so it was a case of sitting down with my missus, really. And it's, it's one of the first occasions, I suppose, where I'd made a decision on family rather than 
what was sort of right for me as a player. Um, so going to Leighton Orient, me and my missus moved back in together. Staying in Exeter or even signing for Rovers, I would have lived at my mum's again and my missus would have lived there. So you have another year apart of travelling up the motorway to see each other and stuff. So I would say that's the main reason of the move. Leighton Orient was a good club. They were up challenging with us, obviously, that season. Um, so... You know, I knew I was joining a good club, but it was more, I would say, that was more of a family move than, than anything else. Um, and it, it just didn't work. I started the season, got injured, and then fell out of the team and, and didn't play. Um, and then Tiz come in for me on loan, and, you know, I just wanted to go and play football. Um, so in the end, you end up going back to where you've just left, moving back in your mums again. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was a shame that it didn't work out. You know, it's one of those things. It's, you know, I've only had a few clubs where I've gone and it's not, not panned out. But, yeah, you look back and you think, really, staying at Exeter would have been the ideal thing. I've just had a great season. Uh, the squad was good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, yeah, signing and staying would, would have been really my first option. But I had to look at other sort of asset, like things in my life and what was more important. And it was really going back and spending a bit of time with the wife, I suppose. And... You know, that was it. If Leighton Orient, if I didn't have had an option of being local to my missus, I would have stayed at Exeter. But because they come up and, you know, we could live around the corner, that was sort of, you know, the, the, the main thing that drove it, I suppose. Um, and like I said, you rejoined um, Exeter City towards the end of that season. Um, the club was fighting relegation and sadly um, didn't beat that fight that season. And what were your memories? No. I guess it was probably quite a difficult time. Yeah, it was difficult. I come in, played a bit. I got an injury so um, I had a little tear in my Achilles so I was sort of playing for injury and was in and out of the team because of it I couldn't really play to my full potential and, and help the, the team out because it sort of come I think a few games in and I was playing with it but it was painful so we had it looked at and I had a little tear in it um, so yeah so it was disappointing because I, I didn't feel I was contributing as much as I could have done and, and helping the team so it was a strange one um, you know, and disappointing, you know, results and, uh, and performances weren't great. And, yeah, it was it was gutting at the end that, you know, we went down and, you know, all the hard work that had gone into getting into that league and trying to stay in it. Um, and then just for me personally, trying, I couldn't really help. Um, and that was that was a disappointing thing. And um, in the end, I had to just take, obviously, a bit more time out from, from sort of playing. So, yeah, it was disappointing, you know, because I wanted to come, come back and do well and help the club out. And I say, after... I think it was three or four games. I was I was sort of struggling, so um, you know I couldn't really play as, as big a part as I wanted. It was hard on the club as well, obviously narrowly missing out on making the playoffs the season before. Yeah, and then you know to end up dropping back to League Two, um, and then you signed permanently again for um, City, which showed a lot of faith. You know, dropping down to League Two. Mm -hmm. Did you have other offers at the time, or was it you wanted to? Yeah, I had a few other offers, um, but I'd enjoyed working with Tiz. Um, I enjoyed, enjoyed the club. I, I, I thoroughly, you know, loved playing there, and I'd obviously had a very good season left and didn't. And so I thought, well, what better way to sort of get going again? So I knew a lot of the players down there, um, and like I said, I said to the missus, you know, I, I've got to go because you know I feel it's important for my career, you know, rather than than anything else. And she was fine, um, so I, I rejoined. Um, and again, it, for me, it was a Another good season personally, you know, did very well, scored a lot of goals again. Um, and it just showed that, you know, I was working for the right manager, had a good setup around me. Um, and, you know, it seemed to work, you know, two years, scored four goals. So, you know, working within the environment was, was good for me. Yeah, 21 goals in 42 games that season. Um, what was it like playing under Paul Tisdale? What was he like as a manager? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, he was different, you know, from being in the game for so long. Um, I've worked with obviously a million different managers. I've never worked for someone like Tiz. It was different, different ideas, was thought completely different of uh, what he wanted to do, methods of training at times, how he treated players. It was all different, and but I enjoyed it. You know, his main focus was if you if you had a start in eleven, his main focus was more on the players that didn't play because the players that were playing were, were obviously always going to be happy. Um, so he had loads of different things. Sometimes I thought he overthought stuff and got too complicated um, and tried to be too clever. But that was him. And, and you know, he respected senior players. Um, I spoke to him a lot. You know, I clashed with him a few times because, you know, I'm quite 
I wouldn't say hard to manage, but I'm quite driven and I want to play all the time. And I'll always put pressure on you as a manager to play me. If I'm not playing, I won't be happy. And, you know, I can be in your face quite a lot. But we spoke we spoke all the time. He was always very good to me. Um, we always sat down. He would always explain his reasons for doing stuff. Um, and we were quite open. So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think in the end, he enjoyed managing me because, you know, I'm not a bad person. I'm just quite challenging. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I think I only do that because I want to play, I want to win, I uh, want to score. And I'm just driven in that way. And I think he liked that. Um, so, yeah, we, we were good. And we've spoke loads even since I've left. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed working under Tiz. I have to say, you know, I say he's different, but um, he gets the job done. I think his methods are good and his overall sort of outlook on football, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, and I would have loved to have carried on working with him. Um, but come the end of the season, he said there wasn't a deal for me, which I, I was very, very surprised at. Um, he, he was had his budget and he was keeping other players over me. And um, I think he was keeping uh, John O'Flynn. And he said there wasn't a deal. And I was like a bit sort of shocked because I, Scored 20 under him, scored another 20 plus under him again. I was still at an age where he'd had older, he'd had senior players anyway at that age. Um, so I don't know if he if he thought that maybe I wasn't going to play or he wasn't going to play him as much, and I wouldn't like that. I don't know, but the conversation was just that there wasn't a deal, um, which which was you know I was gutted to be fair because I'd love to, you know, obviously I played on for another three or four years after that at least. So. I would have loved to have. I think there was two more years at least in me to play for Exeter, you know, without a doubt. For, for what I went on and, and carried on, but I was playing at 41. So, um, yeah, I think I could have played one or two more years for Exeter. But, you know, the man, man in charge, you know, thought otherwise, and that was it, I suppose. I think the fans would agree with you there as well. Um, you had a really good relationship with them during your spell, um, mm. and you still love to this day. I think you get a lot of messages from City fans on Twitter and social media. Um, yeah, your name even pops up every year still, saying as someone they'd like to resign. Um, that must be good. I'm available on a free at the moment, so <laughs> we'll have to speak to Matty. He needs an older striker to sit on the bench or something. <laughs> the missus might not be too pleased. I'll have to leave home again, but we'll be alright. <laughs> um, what would you say was your favourite match that you played for Exeter? Um, there was loads, but I I would probably go down maybe Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. In the snow, five, the home one. Yeah, it was snowing, we're getting 5 0. Um, scored two. Sheffield Wednesday come into obviously a uh, massive crowd. Um, you know, they were the biggest club in the league at the time, I think. Um, we brushed them aside and it was convincingly we weren't even in any trouble. Um, so I would say that as a, as a, as a one off game, but you know, I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of games we played in. Um, we had some tough games and we beat a lot of big teams. Um, but I felt if you look looking back, they had a really, really good team. There were some good players in that in that group that all went on and, and, and achieved other stuff. Um but yeah, that was probably um the memorable game to, to you know win at home five 0 against one of the top teams in the league. I think that was one of the very few games on that day as well, wasn't it? Because of the weather. Yeah, a lot were cooled off. Together. I remember there was snow yeah, there was snow brushed off the pitch and stuff. Um but yeah, managed to get the game on and um yeah, we, we performed very, very well and scored some good goals and, you know, I'd say brushed, brushed a massive team, you know, aside. Very comfortable. Um, and we, we on our day, we, we, we could do that to anyone, really. We had some really good players. And what stands out as your most memorable or favourite goal for Exeter? Again, I was thinking, I, I think my goal against Bournemouth, mm. where I hit to hit to Logie, Logie sent it back and bent it in the corner. I think when you watch it, it's all one touch and all very quick movements and, you know, ends up with a good finish. And again, against a decent side, I think we beat them 2-0 or 2-1. Um, so that would probably be one. Um, I had a chip against MK Dons, which I, which I quite liked as well. And I think there was another lob against, um, I think it was Fleetwood. So yeah, there was a few that, that I scored. I tend to score quite a lot of goals and a lot of sort of different types of lobs and volleys and stuff. So yeah, I think the, the Bournemouth one was good just purely because of the technique of everyone, the passing and the touching. Uh, so I'd probably say that. Um, what do you make of St James Park as a stadium as well? Obviously, it's not you know it's not your standard stadium, really, is it? No, nah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt the ground was fine. You know, you had the big back behind the, the goal, and the, obviously the, the stand across from the, uh, where the dugouts were. Um, it was a nice, nice ground. I think the atmosphere was very good. The pitch was always really good. Um, I really enjoyed playing in it, and obviously now I've seen what they've done the development wise and stuff, new stands. Um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, change rooms were very tight and, and cramped, and 
Um, but it was good. It was felt like an old ground. I mean, I played at Colchester again, similar old ground there road and change rooms were very similar. And, you know, that was the old stand. And um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, there was always a big crowd because we were doing so well. It was always packed out. Um, like I say surface was very good. So no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed playing down there. It was, it was a you know nice sort of old authentic sort of stadium. I played there a few times against against them for different clubs. So. No, it was enjoyable. You know, really, really enjoyed playing in, in in that ground. And you know, I haven't been back since it's been done. So I'll have to try it maybe next year. Come down and see how it looks now. Definitely. Um, you played alongside Matt Taylor in your first spell. Mm. Um, what do you like as a player and a person? Player very good. Um, you know, accomplished centre half did very well. Um, he was a leader. Obviously, he was captain. Um, spoke very well. Was very quiet. Um, but spoke very well, respected by by all the boys. Um, so it doesn't surprise me really, I suppose, seeing him go into coaching and now into management because you, you can't never tell, but when you see the character of the person, it doesn't surprise me that he stepped into that sort of role. Uh, like I say he commanded respect from everyone, led the team, spoke very well. So you tend to find normally captains of teams tend to then be more sort of, to go into management so yeah it doesn't surprise me um, obviously he went in and started with the under 23s and obviously he's worked his way up now as, as first team manager so um, yeah it's, it's nice to see you know I've got a lot of old teammates that are all managing and coaching so um, yeah it's nice to see another one doing doing so well. Um, what have you made of his first in management and his style I mean he's very you know he'll t- say it like it is he doesn't hide behind you know cliches or anything. No I think he's done very well um, you know it's going to be difficult to ever replace Tiz uh, Tiz has been there so long and, and created the club as as we know it, I suppose, and did everything, uh, created a philosophy of play and, and sold players on. And you know, you spoke of XSC and you spoke of Tisdale. So to replace him was always going to be tough, but I think he's done very well. Um, he's, he's kept the foundations, young players have come through, a uh, good brand of football, and he's kept them at the top of the league, challenging. So, you know, I think he's done very well. And I think it's nice young managers, you know, nowadays can speak the truth and say how, how things are. You know, um, media now is huge and you're getting interviewed everywhere and stuff. So, you know, be honest. As long as you stick to your beliefs and, and you, you say that when you're in interviews, then no one can ever sort of question you. So, um, yeah, I think he's doing a great job. Um, and, you know, Exeter seem to be in a good place at the moment, um, challenging and stuff. And it's just now trying to get into the next level of uh, getting a promotion. But, you know, it's a shrewd appointment because I think a lot of people outside of that would have looked and thought, you know, Exeter had done so well, a big manager's leaving, you would normally replace with experience. Um, so for them, you know, it's a great appointment, I think, to go young. Someone who knew the club anyway played for them, obviously was working within the system. So he knew the structure and he knew everyone around it who, who works um, above him. Um, so I think it was very shrewd to, to, to go with him because it could have failed and, you know, they'd have been sort of scrambling and going back to a square one. But... Um, you know, fair play to them. They, they, I think they've got it right, and they've got a good young manager who, you know, can only improve and get better. Uh, finally, you made 96 appearances for Exeter, scoring over 40 goals, um, a very decent mm. record. How do you look back on your time at St James Park? Yeah, fairly enjoyable. Um, I have to say, some really good memories. Um, you know, the disappointing we lost out on the, the Johnson's pay um, after doing so well. You know, we had good runs and stuff. Uh, played it. You know, big stadiums, beat big teams. Uh, obviously, had nearly a promotion push. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I scored a lot of goals. Um, and just enjoyed playing for the, the club. The city was brilliant. You know, I used to enjoy when I stayed down every, every now and then in hotels and wandering around, around the city. It's a lovely place to live. Um, it's a shame I, I didn't make over 100 appearances and score over 50 goals because I'm always very sort of thing like that. I look at stats and stuff. So, um, but, you know, I would look at it as a very successful two two year period. Um, you know, I don't think I could have done sort of any more, really. You know, if you've gone in, played a lot of games, scored a lot of goals. You know, again, the only thing would have been trying to achieve something. And unfortunately, we missed out just on the playoffs and missed out on the semi-final game to Wembley. So, um, they're the sort of things you look back and think it would have been nice to have, have, have achieved one of them. Um, but on a whole, I think if you stepped into a club and said in two years you're going to achieve that, I think you would take it, really. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyable. And, I suppose the only thing, again, you look back and think it would be nice to have had one or two more years and, you know, who knows what the, the stats would have been. But like I say, I think well, what I was brought in to do, I think I, I achieved that and, and hopefully, you know, made fans happy and, and, and 
entertain them, I suppose, because that's ultimately what, what you're in the game for, is, is to entertain fans. And um, hopefully they, they enjoyed me playing for their club. Absolutely. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak to us, Jamie. No, nah, no problem at all. Yeah.